the third traditional legal measure which i would like to mention is the action for passing off as most of you might be knowing action for passing off is a common law remedy and it is widely used in the fight against ambush marketing in most simple words an action for passing off is allowing trader a to prevent a competitor b from passing off their goods as if they were as goods the three essential elements for a successful passing off action are one reputation or goodwill second misrepresentation third damage as a result of such misrepresentation is it easy to prove this in the context of ambush marketing i would say the first and third are comparatively easy but the second factor is extremely difficult one of the interesting cases which can illustrate the effectiveness of or the limitation of passing of action in the context of ambush marketing is icc development international limited versus rv enterprises in this case the defendant rv enterprises was one of the authorized dealers of philips and they created advertisements before the world cup cricket 2003 using slogans philips diwali manavo world cup jao and buy a philips audio system win a ticket to the world cup they also inserted a pictorial representation of a ticket with an imaginative seat and gate number saying cricket world cup 2003 advertisement was shown in all media including newspapers television internet and magazines as they were not official sponsors and not entitled to distribute tickets the plaintiff approached the court the main argument of the plaintiff was that the defendant's intentional use of the slogans in question and the insertion of the pictorial representation of the ticket with an imaginative seat and gate number on the advertising campaign amounted to passing off and ambush marketing as it was to create an identification with the event and to sell off their goods through that misrepresentation the plaintiff focused its arguments on the real likelihood of confusion and the unmistakable aura of deception even though the court accepted that the law relating to passing off has been developing and expanding it pointed out that this was a type of passing off claim wherein it is alleged that the defendant has promoted his product or business in such a way as to create a false impression that his product or business is in some way approved authorized or endorsed by the plaintiff or that there is some business connection between them according to the court the main question to be answered in such a situation was whether sufficient number of purchases of the defendant's goods are unmistakably likely to be confused about the source of defendant's goods or assume that defendant has some connection with the official sponsors of the event the court observed that in the instant case that the defendants have not used plaintiff's logo or the mascot dazzler on any of their advertisements or promotional campaigns it also noted that the defendants have inserted only a pictorial representation of a ticket with an imaginative seat and gate number so as to draw attention of the purchasing public to the event the court was of the view that this did not show any likelihood of confusion in public mind that the defense are sponsors or licensees of the event according to the court the slogans merely showed that the purchasers of the defense good may win a ticket and travel package to see the world cup and nothing more therefore the court came to the conclusion that the basic ingredients of passing off action was not made out in this case among the traditional legal measures passing of action is the most powerful one and one of the most frequently used weapon but as the case laws discussed here point out even passing of action is highly limited in its scope when it comes to fighting ambush marketing when we realize the limitations of passing of action along with the limitations of other traditional legal measures like trademark infringement action and copyright infringement action we may reach at a disappointing observation that the traditional legal measures are having very limited scope in fighting the sophisticated ambush marketing methods this forces us to search for better solutions for addressing ambush marketing incidents one of the important legal innovations that have happened in this regard is drafting of even specific laws aimed at preventing ambush marketing two examples in this regard are sydney 2000 games Indonesian Images Protection Act 1996 if from Australia and the London Olympic Games and Paralympic Games Act 2006 from UK due to time limitations let's just have a look at the first one for the Sydney 2000 Games Indonesian Images Protection Act 1996 the main aim was regulation of the use of indonesia and images 
associated with the Sydney 2000 Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games for commercial purpose. The main feature was it supplanted and augmented the existing intellectual property laws to protect a peculiar set of indicia. And its legislative history can be traced back to a parliamentary report entitled Cashing in on the Sydney Olympics, protecting the Sydney Olympic Games from ambush marketing. The Sydney 2000 Games Act defined Sydney 2000 Games indicia in a very broad manner so as to protect phrases like Game City, Millennium Games, Sydney Games, Sydney 2000 and the combination of the words Game, Number 2000 and the words 2000. The Act also protected words like Olympiad, Olympic and the phrases like Share the Spirit, Summer Games, etc. The Act also made two lists. List A contained the words Olympian and Olympics and list B contain the words bronze, games, gold, green, gold, medals, millennium, silver, spirit, etc. Any combination of the words in the list A with any word in list B was brought within the ambit of the meaning of Sydney 2000 Olympic Games in Asia. The broad strategy was aimed at preventing the common ambush marketing practices of referring to the events in indirect ways. A similar strategy was adopted in the act with respect to the images associated with the games also. This also invited criticism from certain scholars that the act tightly controlled the linguistic and symbolic domain. It is also interesting to note that the circumstances where the Sydney 2000 games indicia and images were considered to as being applied were clearly clarified in the act and I would strongly recommend you to go through this legislation. So, first by first defining what all things can constitute the Sydney 2000 Games in Asia and Images and then proceeding by defining the circumstances that will be considered as application of the Sydney 2000 Games in Asia and Images, the Act made the Sydney 2000 Olympics a really challenging game for ambush marketers. The Act empowered the Sydney Organizing Committee for the 2000 Olympic Games and the Sydney Paralympic Olympic organizing committee to license a person to use all or any of the Sydney 2000 games in Asia and images for commercial purposes and the specifically required them to make any entry of such licenses in the register of license users. The pragmatic approach of the Australian legislature and the Olympic committee is quite evident in the drafting of the remedies under this legislation. According to this legislation, when a person other than the SOCOG, SPOC or license user uses the Sydney 2000 Games in Asia and images for commercial purposes, a prescribed court will be having the power to grant an injunction to restrain the person from such content. The Act also provided a very interesting remedy that is corrective advertisements. On an application from SOCOG or SPOC, the prescribed court was empowered to make an order under its discretion requiring a person to publish advertisements by such means as the court thinks fit at the person's own expense and intervals specified in the order if the court was satisfied that she or he has used the Sydney 2000 games in Asia and images for commercial purpose without the required authorization. This provision was certainly an open threat to the ambush marketing experts across the world as no company would prefer to go for a corrective advertisement as series of corrective advertisements through different media could cause irreparable damages to their reputation and brand value. The enactment of a good legislation as such is never a solution to any problem and only a proper enforcement of the provisions of such legislations can address the mischief against which legislation was drafted. Most of the academicians consider the anti-ambush marketing strategy at Sydney Olympics as a big success. But if one may observe closely, it could be seen that even the Sydney 2000 Act didn't achieve its aim of preventing ambush marketing completely. The best example in this regard is ambush marketing done by Qantas Airlines, which is mentioned in your module. Though the event-specific laws have been successful to a great extent in threatening the ambush marketers, I must also mention that they have brought in some serious public concerns. The most important one is that they place unnecessary and unjustifiable restrictions on symbols and words in public domain. Many of the words restricted are those that should be available in public domain and everyone has a right to use those words freely. Freedom of speech and expression is one of the most important fundamental rights present in the constitutions across the world and we need to ask whether many of the restrictions imposed by event specific laws are constitutionally valid. Another important issue 
if strictly enforced is a most of these event specific legislations would limit the freedom of individual athletes to exploit their success it would be an injustice on the athletes and their personal sponsors if they are prevented from cashing their glory at the moment of their greatest achievements and marketability yet another issue is the restrictions on the right of people to choose consumer products of their choice when an event organizer forces a genuine spectator to drop at the entrance a non-sponsor's cola bottle or a t-shirt with the logo of a non-sponsor serious questions about personal liberty and consumer choice arises moreover it is also important to observe that over restrictions can damage the spirit of events for instance during the last icc cricket world cup a number of cricket fans complained that the event organizers anti ambush marketing concerns had gone excessive impairing the excitement and glory of the event consequently today the major challenge before the event organizers is to safeguard the genuine commercial interest without contravening the fundamental delights and vivacity of the very event let me conclude this brief presentation by adding that while event specific laws have been successful to a great extent in controlling ambush marketing incidents we need to have more debates that can identify more balanced solutions it is very important to strike a balance between the legitimate rights of event organizers and sponsors on one side and the basic rights of the general public on the other while we need to protect sponsorship values of the events so that we will have more and more events we also need to give due importance to the basic human rights democratic values and larger public interests in a society cannot be overlooked while endeavoring to protect commercial interests and we can achieve that only through more debates on the subject and more balanced solutions i hope that by participating in this module you will also be able to contribute to more debates and more balanced solutions in this area thank you